In this HVACR training video, we're going over how to use quick connect test gauges or probes instead of a full manifold gauge set and hoses in order to check the charge, to recover refrigerant, and to add refrigerant into an air conditioning system. So we're gonna be using this style right here, which you can read right on the, the face of this tool and with an app, but you have different styles like this one right here, you have to have an app, and then you have just your standard compound set right here. So if you wanna learn more about just checking the refrigerant charge and troubleshooting systems, make sure to check out our quick reference uh, cards right here over to our website at acservicetech.com and also our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. Now we're gonna get into it. So now we have our test probes and our temp sensors on and we have them uh, reading in our app at zero PSI and we also can read our temperatures here and here. And so we're gonna go ahead and hook these up, but first I wanna explain the misconception of having to need a valve core removal tool in order to recover or add refrigerant in a running system. Now, some technicians are actually attaching this here and removing the valve core just in order to read pressure. So in this case, here's our, our liquid one because it has our red band. And so what they're doing is they're removing the valve core and then they're attaching right here. We don't need to do that. Uh, we can just use a T such as this right here. So if we have a valve core here, a valve core here, and then they, we have a valve core depressor, the valve core depressor will push in on that. And then our uh, test probe also has a valve core depressor right here in the end. And so we don't need the valve core removal tool. Now you could also use a manual valve core depressing tool and so what happens is when you attach this on here and you attach this uh, test probe right here onto the side, you can press in on the valve core right here. And so you can do that so you don't have to do it quickly. And so it gives you a lot of control. This, this uh, particular one also has a backseat function so it's able to lock the refrigerant in the tool. Uh, so you can use that. You could just even just attach them straight on. But the whole point is you need some type of a T fitting in order to add a recover refrigerant. We also are using hoses with a manual on off valve. So that's the only other reason that you might use or include a valve core removal tool is just for the valve. But in this case, we're using these hoses here. So I'm just gonna attach this right in the end. And so this is gonna be for our high side. And so now we're reading our pressure. And so we're gonna attach our other side in. And so we're gonna use our T's. All right, so now that we have those connected, what we're gonna do next is I'm going to go ahead and hook the hose up here and I'm going to uh, purge the air out of the hose. And so we're gonna connect onto our uh, red handle, which has a, a dip tube that goes down to the bottom. And I'm actually gonna purge the, the hose right here with pressure from the bottle. So I'm gonna close this handle, I'm gonna open up this tank and... All right, so we got all of the air out of this hose right here, and then we can attach right here now, we want to make sure to get the air out of just this portion and this portion. And so we can kind of just press in on the valve core right here, just like that. Now, we're not going to open this handle up until we're ready to recover refrigerant. Remember that right now, this uh, recovery bottle pressure is at the same pressure of the system because the system is often equalized. So we're just going to leave that just like that. And then on this side, we're going to go ahead and attach our hose. And first thing we want to make sure of is that our manual... Uh, handle right here is in the off position. So there we go. And then we're going to purge the air out here. So that's it. So we just purge the air out here and we're gonna attach in here. Now, same thing, we're gonna just purge any air out of this fitting right here and this fitting. So it's very uh, little pressure here. All right, there we go. 
we're going to attach our uh, temperature sensors. So I'm going to attach this one right here onto this uh, tube, but first we want to go ahead and uh, clean this up a little bit just to make sure that we're getting an accurate temperature. So we have unsoaped steel wool, and so we want to make sure that our temperature sensor is on there well and reading an accurate temperature. We're going to do the same thing right here. And we're on there. So now we're going to move in for a closer shot, but first I also want to turn on our scales as well. So turn that one on and this one on. Uh, make sure that we're on ounces and we're going to zero the scale out. So you know this recovery uh, bottle right here was empty. I vacuumed it and I put about half a pound of R4 Tanae inside. And so that is now zeroed. And this one right here is a virgin R4 Tanae refrigerant bottle. And the R4 Tanae needs to come out of the bottle as a liquid. So that's why the bottle's upside down. And so now we're gonna go ahead and turn the system on. So we replaced the filter inside and checked the indoor airflow and that's good. And now we're gonna turn this outdoor unit on. So the pressures up here uh, were the same before and now you see that the low side is lowering and so the low side is over here and we have our high side over here and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this phone right here so you can see it and what we have is on the low pressure side right here you see a pressure of 121 psi and a saturated temperature at the end of the coil presently of 42 degrees. The temperature on the vapor line right here is 40, well, about 50 degrees, 50.5. So this is going to uh, need to run for about three minutes uh, before we check this saturated temperature. We need to make sure that this is above 32 degrees. And so we have our pressure right here. We convert it to our saturated temperature of 39 degrees presently. And so if it was uh, below 32 degrees, that might mean that we're low on refrigerant, low indoor airflow or liquid line restriction. And then we would need to check the, the high side in order to determine what the problem is. But uh, presently, we're just going to let this system uh, run for three minutes. This unit has a piston metering device at the indoor coil. So we're going to be using the total superheat method in order to check the refrigerant charge. And so uh, the superheat method is taken on the low side, and that's right here. And so it actually says what the actual total superheat is right down here. It says uh, presently 20 degrees, but we're going to let the system run for about uh, three minutes and make sure that the sat temp is good. After we do that, we're going to let the system run for about 10 to 15 minutes so that the refrigerant can cycle through the system uh, before really determining what our true total superheat is. So we let the system run for three minutes and we have a sat temp of 44 degrees. We have an actual superheat of 28 degrees and a subcooling of 5 degrees. So now we're going to let this system run for the additional, say, 10, 12 minutes, and then we're going to check the charge. After that, that's when we're going to make our refrigerant adjustments. We're first going to uh, recover some refrigerant out of the system, but we're going to let this system run for an additional 10, 12 minutes. So the system's been running for about 12 minutes now, and I want to go over our target superheat, so our indoor wet bulb temperature was about 64 degrees and our outdoor temperature presently is 90 degrees and so what we do is we take 64 over to 90 and we have about 9 degrees as our target superheat and so we have an actual superheat of 25.9 so that means we're undercharged presently and we have 5.9 degrees of subcooling and so that's a little low we may have closer to about 10 degrees or so when we're accurately charged. But first thing I'm going to do, even though we're undercharged presently, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recover refrigerant. What you're going to see is this superheat is going to increase, subcoin is going to decrease. So I just want to show you how that works. So we're going to recover a little bit. You see our scale. We want to make sure that's still zeroed out. Anytime uh, that we move our hose, we might be messing up the scale. So I'm going to try to avoid that. And so here we go. We're going to recover a little bit of refrigerant. So you see that I recovered 2.2 ounces out of this system. And the reason that we recovered that refrigerant is because the pressure inside this running system is higher than the bottle pressure. And so right here we have a pressure of 324 
psi. And so that's much, much higher uh, than what's in this bottle. And so the refrigerant is going to come out of the system and enter the bottle. On the opposite side of the system, when we go to uh, add refrigerant back in, the bottle pressure over here is going to be higher than the low side pressure. And so liquid refrigerant is going to go from the bottle and it's going to go into the system. And so, so far what you've seen is this subcoin has lowered a little bit. Uh, superheat's about the same still. I'm going to recover a little bit more. You want to avoid recovering a lot of refrigerant this way because what will happen is you'll lose oil out of the system. And because the oil is mixed with the liquid refrigerant, it'll come out of the system and enter into this bottle. So you only want to do this a little bit uh, if you're just adjusting the charge if a system happened to be overcharged. And so what I'll do is I'm going to let this system run now uh, for maybe about uh, five, ten minutes, and then we're going to check the charge again now that we've recovered our four ounces out of this system. So as you can see, our superheat is high, our subcoin is low, our pressure on our low side is low, and our pressure on our high side is low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of refrigerant. So what we want to do is we're going to add a little bit of refrigerant in at a time. So we don't want to add a whole heck of a lot because we don't want to go ahead and slug the compressor. And so we're going to add this a little bit slower now. We're at 2.2 ounces added in. And so what you have is a vapor compressor that should only have vapor entering it. And what's happening is this suction line goes right into the compressor. And so uh, you don't want to just completely open up this valve and have liquid refrigerant entering. Of course, liquid refrigerant has to exit that bottle in order to remain a 50-50 mix of R32 and, and 125. And so what I'm doing right now, we took four ounces out over here, and now I put in four more ounces back into the system. We knew we were undercharged before. I'm going to keep adding some refrigerant. As we add refrigerant, our low side pressure is going to increase. And what's going to happen is our superheat is going to lower. At first, uh, what's going to happen is the uh, temperature on our low side may lower and then it may come back up again and then may lower down again. And so that's this temperature right here. So remember that on our low side we have our pressure, then we have our Fortenay pressure converted to the saturated temperature of 44.6 degrees. And so then we have our temperature on the line, which is 67.5. So we take 67.5 minus 44, and we're left with an actual total superheat out here of 23 degrees. And you got to remember that our saturated temperature here is the temperature in the middle of the indoor coil. And so we're going to keep adding a little bit of refrigerant, but after we add some refrigerant, we're going to want to let it run and cycle through for a little bit. And what should happen is our subcooling should be higher than it originally was, and our superheat should be lower. Another thing to take into consideration is that as a system runs, it's taking humidity out of the building, so it's removing the load, so both the low and high pressure sides of the system will lower as the system runs. So if you didn't have a manual low loss valve here, you could use a valve core removal tool uh, valve right there, but it's just best to have a uh, manual low loss fitting on the end of your hose, such as this right here. I always use hoses that have this valve here. You see our subcoin has risen, uh, but you know it, you still need to let it run for a little while. And so you know I'm going to let that sit for now because we don't want to overcharge it. We don't want our superheat to fall down too low because if there is zero degrees of superheat, then what's going to happen is you're going to have saturated refrigerant from the indoor coil entering the vapor compressor, and that would damage it. So I want to let this system run uh, for maybe about five minutes and let the refrigerant cycle through, and then we'll check our pressures and sat temps, superheat and subcoin then. So at the indoor unit, we have a, a wet bulb temperature in the return duct of 62 degrees. It's presently right about 90 degrees, right about, say, 88. 
And so if we line that up, we're looking at about, say, six or seven degrees of target superheat. And so our actual superheat is 12 degrees, which is a little higher. And so what we can do right now is we can take the refrigerant bottle and we can shut the valve off. And so this valve right here, we're just gonna shut this valve and we can charge the liquid refrigerant that's in this blue hose into the system. And so what that's gonna do is as we add this refrigerant, it's gonna be able to use the refrigerants in the hose and our superheat should lower. So there's no point in the scale at this point right now. I'm just gonna take this off. We're just gonna charge this a little at a time though. And so what's going to happen is, as we charge refrigerant from this hose, it's going to go into this side until it's the same pressure as the, the pressure in this suction line. So you see our total superheat is lowering. I'm just going to wait right there and see what it ends up being. You see it's lowering a lot now. So I definitely want to stop, might be a little bit too much. So we'll see, see if it rises back up to the proper superheat. We weren't that far off, we were at 12 degrees as our total superheat before, and then our uh, target superheat was about six to seven degrees. And so we don't want to be lower than that as our total superheat over here. I'm gonna monitor this and make sure it doesn't dip down. I'm gonna let this system run uh, for a few minutes and just check this out. But it is rising. You see our subcooling rose as we added the refrigerant in. So this will always rise. What's gonna happen is as we add refrigerant, this pressure will rise and our temperature on the, on the liquid line is going, to, is going to lower. And so what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a spread between our sat temp and our line temp and that's where our, our subcooling is. It's the saturated temp minus the line temp. And so over here, our superheat is actually the opposite. It's the line temp minus the sat temp. And so you see it's right about what we want, which is seven degrees of total superheat. So I'm gonna let this system continue to run, make sure that these numbers are stabilized. Anytime that you add refrigerant into a system, you really need to let the refrigerant cycle through and give it a little bit of time. You can see our superheat is right about seven degrees, seven, eight degrees. That's our total superheat and our subcooling is right about 9.4. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect our uh, vapor line. And then we can go ahead and disconnect our liquid line. I'm gonna remove this. The other thing that we can do is, since this system is equipped with a piston, we could just let the system turn off. This, uh, the pressure in here would lower, and then we could just disconnect that. But now we just go ahead and leak check at these ports. At this point, you're gonna check for leaks at the ports with bubble leak detector. You could add the bubble leak detector right in, or you could put a cap on, then put the bubble leak detector around the perimeter, or you could have a hole drilled in the cap, the end cap, and then just put bubble leak detector on the end. So after that, after you're making sure that these reseated, you can go ahead and put your, your port caps back on. If you're in an area that's accessible to the public, you wanna make sure to have locking caps on your ports and you have gotta make sure that you have the proper key in order to go ahead and connect it and in order to take it back off again. So that's how you do it. So I hope this video helped you understand the procedures that we use in the field. And if you wanna learn more about preparing a system for refrigerant, checking the charge, troubleshooting methods, check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. And we have the full outline available over at acservicetech.com slash acbook. We also have quick reference cards that we use right out in front of the unit while servicing the system. In order to check the charge, troubleshoot, we've got PT charts, refrigerant weights, and all kinds of information right here. And so these are available over at our website at acservicetech.com and over on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.